Parents are the ultimate role models for children. Every word, movement, and action has an effect. No other person or outside force has a greater influence on a child than the parents, once said by Bob Kishi. It gives me <clears throat> immense pleasure to wish a bright, pleasant and beautiful morning to all our revered parents, worthy principal ma'am, our senior coordinator, our junior coordinator, Mrs. Sarka, and our coordinator from the junior section, Ms. Manuin, <coughs> my colleagues, and dear students. <coughs> it's my privilege to welcome all present here to grace the occasion together as a Smart Hunters family to mark another landmark of success. Before we begin, may I request everyone to put their mobiles on silent mode. Thank you. Today is the day for our students and their parents to know about this new journey and build their future from here. We know that Orientation Day is a very special and much awaited event in every student and their parents' life, as it is the celebration of their achievements and upcoming journey. I, Gunmi Kaur, on behalf of the Smart Wonders team, welcome you all for this orientation session. Parents are requested to mark their attendance in case they haven't done it in the beginning. Let your life be a lamp to guide others on their way, to find their own way home. Let's start our day with the lamp lighting. It's a tribute to Master Sarvi to bestow her warm blessings upon us to achieve additional academic and future prosperity. I would like to invite our worthy principal, Mrs. Poonamji Kaur, Ms. Sarika Ma'am, Manmeen Ma'am, Harul Ma'am, to join her for lighting the lamp. A lovely good morning to one and all present here. Respected Principal Ma'am, 
respected junior wing head Sarika ma'am, respected our co coordinating ma'am and dean ma'am, my dear very dear colleagues and wonderful parents who took out time for their own children and are here with us today to listen and to attend and of course to contribute to whatever we can do for the development of your ward in the upcoming session. So I welcome you all for the orientation 2023-24. To begin with, I would like to congratulate each one of you since your ward has been promoted from the previous class and reached the next session. Of course, the new session must begin with a lot of um, enthusiasm, energy, and of course, a lot of interest from both the sides, from the parents as well as from the school, that obviously lays a foundation stone for the beginning of our children's new work. So let's begin with the orientation presentation. And uh, we have tried to cover almost all the things, whatever we do throughout the session. So let us begin with the stalwarts of Smart Founder School, that is our director, Mr. Sadeep Singh, and our principal, Ms. Poonamjit Kaur. Both of them act as a catalyst for us, but yes, um, despite of the fact that they are not present and in every situation, but yes, their guidance and their support keeps us moving. And of course, introducing you to the vice principal of the senior wing, that is Ms. Rana Chona, all of us know. Uh, she is outside Kanji for some time, and of course, she will be joining us soon by the first week of April. So, of course, we will be guided by her um, expertise guidance also at every moment of your child session. And of course, that's the coordinator, senior wing. So, first of all, beginning with the vision of the Smart Partner School, as we all know that we at SWS believe in the holistic development of the young minds. And of course, the school offers exciting opportunities for all our children, challenges for parents, teachers and students to come together, grow and learn together and make, make them the three C's that we always claim about. That's competent, confident and caring individuals. That's what we aim at. Now having a short glimpse of the journey that we had last year, since we had um, joined <coughs> offline after our after our uh, two years of COVID, and that has been really, really, you know, troublesome for each one of us, and all of us know that. So we have tried our best to make this session quite fruitful for our children. So there are a few glimpses, like the session started with Sri Sukhmani Sahib Path that was organized in the school premises, as we all truly believe that the blessings of the Almighty are very, very important for the goodness of the institution as well as the uh, children of the school. So, um, with, uh, obviously, this was done in the school. And then, we had orientation classes, orientation of the classes 9 and 10 for the last session. These are just glimpses of few activities that we were doing. We may have had many celebrations throughout the year. We tried to do whatever we could. We had Basaki celebrations in school, the Earth Day assemblies. These are just few glimpses of the list of a number of activities that we had done throughout the year so as to involve our students and so as to imbibe a feeling of belongingness and of course our commitment towards the world during this session. Next thing that we would like to share with you is the excellent result that our one rights had in the last batch of CBSC class and board examinations. So in this to just sum up and brief, giving you a brief overview of the result that we had a total of 70 students appeared for the examination with 23 students scoring more than 90 percent marks. Now we are top the school with 97.8 percent and followed by Gauri Gupta and Prabhleen Kaur with 97.4 percent and Anish Veer Singh Khurana in the third position with 97 percent followed by Manveer Singh with 96.8 percent. We believe that this was one of the best results we had despite of all the odds during the COVID time. We had our investiture ceremony since we were back to the school, so we tried our level best to give our students the opportunity to uh, lead, to learn how to lead, to work in a team together with their friends. So we had class shows for 9 and 10 also.
then these are few of our proud achievers like our students brought various laurels in the various institutions okay so uh, let's to begin with few of them our students brought laurels in various categories in the inter school competition in their calling held at manav rachna international school in photography and videography competition vidyan thakur and jaskaran singh two of our students won the first prize then the netic girl of class 9b was awarded a letter of appreciation for his continuous participation in the various social welfare projects organized by leo club uh, chandigarh fortune along with chandigarh administration then the uh, dps organized a legal conclave where students from various schools were invited to enroll and uh, take part in a series of events that were conducted and the best part was that our school earned a cash award of rupees 15000 for maximum participation and the contribution to the blue english stock it really worked as you know a great accomplishment for smart wonder school another achievement was the students of smart wonder school participated in unmanned aerial vehicle for societal benefits and inter, inter school competition organized by aeronautical society of india chandigarh out of 24 participating teams from across the tri city smart wonder school team stood first in the school assembly competition and they were awarded a cash prize of 5000 so we are sharing with you a few glimpses of the events that where our children has participated and brought laurels to school Vidisha Gupta of Age C was awarded the Runners Up Trophy in the Girls Under 14 CTS Open Tennis Tournament. Abhraj Bali of Class 8A got the first prize in football tournament organized by Tri City Connect Football Academy. So these are the budding stars of Smart Wonder School. Then we have various achievements in the field of sports also. So this is a big list of our achievers, those who have performed wonderfully well in the inter-school district sports tournaments, <coughs> and uh, the achievements were remarkable. All these have got the uh, various prizes in table tennis, cricket, basketball, and the uh, performance was remarkably good for our, all our children. And of course, it included the district badminton, then the pistol shooting, skating, cricket. and of course there were a number of prizes for our students and indeed we are really blessed to have children like this in our school and of course i truly believe that the teachers here and the uh, the departments here do their best to bring about the best in our children outside so let's move on to the guidelines for the upcoming session 2023 24 so these are the few points that we need to basically focus on these will be of course coming in detail in the next slides that we'll be talking about is arrival and dispersal and pick and drop most of you are aware already aware of the rules that we follow regarding this but yes there are few changes in these then the uniform and the submission of work that they are supposed to do rules and regulations while in school the nep skill subjects the new education policy and the school examination cbse guidelines so we need to talk about all this slightly because now your boards are in the board classes that's the class 9 and of course they'll be appearing in their boards next year so these two years are going to be tedious for your boards so we need to give 100% from our side as well as you need to give 100% from your side so that we can together bring the best out of your children so moving on with it there are few instructions that we all need to take care the first thing will be like the proper time table will be followed for the classes and there are a number of activities that we have planned for the upcoming session so they will be followed as per the calendar and uh, like we used to have before covid we are again starting with our enrichment clubs and the enrichment activities as you must or you all must be aware about that so that will again be providing an opportunity for your child to uh, use his or her talent in the best possible way and of course zero period will be conducted in the morning which will be including their pas as usual assembly class assemblies that are being conducted the enrichment activities and house activities the enrichment activities will be conducted on wednesdays and thursdays and of course the house activity will be conducted on friday so let's move on school timings will be from monday to friday it will be from 8 am to 2:50 pm 
And now for, uh, from this session, we are going back to the previous things again. Saturdays are working for our children. So the timings for Saturday will be 8 to 1.35. Attendance will be marked in the classrooms from 8 to 8.5. And of course, Saturdays will be a regular working day for our children. Okay? I can see the expressions on the face of the children who are sitting here. I can understand. But yes, this is high time for all of us to, you know, get that seriousness for our board class. So moving on. Yeah. This is about the school uniform. Uh, you'll be getting the complete information on the in the school alphabet, especially for page number 11. But still, in order to bring about comfort and clarity for our children and ease for our students for wearing the school uniform, we have brought about certain changes in the uniform. So Monday to Thursday will be the same uniform. Our students will be wearing their uh, denim jeans along with the navy blue t-shirt with school logo. And uh, for Friday, we'll be having house uniform. And house uniform will be the house t-shirt with school blue track pants, not the gray tra uh, track pants. It will be blue track pants now. And the same uh, uniform that is being worn from Monday to Thursday will be worn on Saturday again. Right? So there is not much of confusion now. Monday to Thursday and Saturday is the same uniform. And only the house uniform uh, with the house t-shirt and the lower the, with the track pants to be worn on Friday. And removing all the confusions about the shoes and everything, the management, the authorities have brought about a very simple thing that on all the days our students will be wearing black sport shoes. So it will not be a confusion or any kind of chaos for the children since we found many parents complaining about this that the white shoes that the students were wearing were not very comfortable and of course they were not good for playing sports also. So now the students will not be having any complaint of this kind and I hope the parents will also be happy. So, um, next thing is a request from our side, please give healthy food in the film. Please avoid giving um, any kind of junk food to children every day. We, we would request and we, I think, have been doing it last year also, or the class teachers also know about it, that junk food can be sent only on Fridays. Only one day can be, you know, uh, it used to be Friday. So I think the same should be maintained and on the rest of the days please give some healthy food, some crunchy with vegetable or something because when they sit together they eat. At home they will say that we have not eaten, but they will eat when they come to school because they are hungry. They sit together, they share their difference, that is a wonderful view for all of us to see. And of course we cherish those moments with our children also. So it's a request, please don't send any kind of junk food, don't send biscuits and different. It's a request. That may be there in their, you know, in, if they want to have something in buses while they are going back, but not in their regular tiffins. And of course, canteen facility will be provided in school. Um, give us some time and we will be sharing the detailed information with you regarding this. So about now about the arrival and dispersal of your wards in school. So students are expected to reach school at least 10 minutes prior to the starting of the classes. Kindly do not drop your child very early in the school. I think this has been addressed many a times, but still it will be repeated again this time because the teachers report to school, if you talk of the summer timings, the reporting time for the teacher is 7.45. So if you drop your child at 7.30 or 7.20 in school, it's not right for the child you know, to be there and to be waiting for so long. So it's a request from our side to drop your child 10 minutes prior to the time, but yes, not much before than that. And of course, drop the child at gate number one and pick up from the same gate. Parents to carry their ID cards when they, whenever they come to pick up their wards. And dispersal will be conducted in the usual way from the front lawn and the basketball court. Okay, and pick up students ke liye, the parents are requested to be on time, please, when you need to pick them up. In case of any emergency or in case of any problem that you are not able to come due to any XYZ reason, kindly make a call and form in the reception. You'll make your child seated at the reception and you can come and make your child within the school option. Mm -hmm. And uh, now this is something very important and uh, I think all of us need to realize this. That there will be zero tolerance towards latecomers to school and children in incorrect uniform. So earlier we used to say that in case the uh, child comes to school late for three hours then we'll be sending child back to school. But now we will not be tolerating any kind of delay in school because Students has, have been taking it very lightly. So one request from our side that kindly drop your child or send your child to school in time. In case the child is late, we will be requesting you to take the child back home. 
So it's a request from our side. Please be, let's be punctual and let's teach our children to be punctual. Because somewhere we feel, even I'm a parent, and as a, as a parent, I also realize the same thing. Due to my casual approach, my children do learn such things from me. So if I can do it, I hope everyone can do it because I try to be very particular. But still it happens many a times that I'm not. So let's try to bring in this very formally as well as the incorrect uniform. So you're requested to please now to there is no confusion in the uniform. So it's clear every day what your child is supposed to wear. Kindly send your child properly attired in school uniform. And one more thing that's not written here, especially the girls with long hair. I request please tie their plaits before they come to school. You know, those ponytails create a lot of problems many times in the classes because they'll do something what they're not supposed to do and we can't stop them. So it's a request, girls with long hair, please do not come to school with a ponytails or um, loosely tied hair. The hair has to be properly tied. So let's move on. <coughs> There are a few school rules and regulations, of course, we all know, we are familiar with it. Students must carry the textbooks, notebooks, please, according to the timetable only. Um, this has been um, an issue with many students. This year we have been conducting random back checks also, and believe me, a lot of extra things are found in the lab. Uh, now at class 9 level, the children are big enough to realize and understand what they are supposed to actually put in their bags. In case you have any doubt, any you want any clarity about your books and notebooks, which book is to be brought, kindly ask your teacher. But bring only those books and more notebooks that are supposed to be brought. Okay. Next is homework should you will be shared in the usual way, and uh, of course you'll be sharing it on the school plans. And whenever the school plan plans any kind of remedial classes, as and when planned by school, kindly ensure that your board board presents it. And kindly do not approach the staff members for extra coaching or tuitions. No informal WhatsApp groups to be created from our side, please. We will not be creating any WhatsApp groups technically this year. And the communication should be via school part only. One more request from my side, that since the teachers are not permitted to carry their mobile phones throughout the day, they keep their mobiles in their bags and they take it when they get uh, free or when they get off. Now the issue arises that in the meanwhile, if you as a parent wish to convey something to the school, you drop a WhatsApp message and feel okay, when it is the hour and it's done. But the problem arises that the teacher doesn't open the phone. So we are going back to our previous system. Kindly make a call to the school reception and inform us. We'll of course listen to your queries. We will attend to whatever you want. What kind of problems you might be facing. Maybe you are in a situation where we are not able to understand. But it's a request. Please avoid sending WhatsApp messages to the class teachers. Because may, maybe they read it after 3. When they get chutti from him. So that's no point. So the, sending that message will be of no help for you all. So moving on. All parents are requested to be having school bar on their uh, phones or their systems. Parents can write a mail to school for any grievance. They can meet the vice principal principal with prior appointment. This means in case of any query, any problem, please do not keep it to yourself. Kindly share with us. Send a mail to school. Take an appointment with vice principal, principal or whosoever you want to approach. But please do not wait for a PDM day that comes after two months or do not wait, do not prolong the problem that you are facing because of any reasons your ward is facing because of any problem. Kindly contact as early as possible so that the problems can be solved in the beginning itself. Parents can meet the teacher counselor on any Saturday with a prior appointment. Any Saturday you feel that you want to talk, you want to meet the counselor, the coordinators, kindly uh, take an appointment and meet. Just make a call at the reception and it will be done. Kindly send a diary note in case of any appointment with the educator or any other important message to be conveyed to the class in charge of principal. The library books, obviously, this is just to convey this to you that we all need to be very punctual and develop this kind of habit that in case we get our books issued, we are supposed to return at our time. Even I am a default, I need to return one book. So it does happen with all of us, but this is how we need to learn. This is not about you know charging anything with any child, this is just about that 
the child needs to understand that there is a time limit and the child is supposed to follow. Students are not permitted to wear any ornaments or use of any expensive wristwatches. No smartwatches, please. Please ensure that your ward is wearing, not wearing any smartwatch in the school. He, can be wearing a, he or she can be wearing a simple watch, not a problem, but no smartwatches at all. Now the child might give this an explanation, he is a KMI band, which is not connected to the phone, so nothing can be done. They have XYZ stories behind it, there are a number of games in there, um, these smartwatches and all these kinds of bands also. So it's a kind request, please do not let your child wear it in school. And children must develop, of course, the school property. Any kind of damage should not be done to the property. And in case it is done, it has to be compensated. Okay, children should be discouraged from using the social media for uploading any kind of information. Cyber safety protocols to be followed. Now this, I think, needs to be discussed in a very nice way. And the point is, because of COVID times also, we all have found and we all realize, I as a parent feel, our children have developed a lot of comfort level with the mobile phones. Believe me, this is creating a lot of problem with our children, which maybe we are not realizing at the right moment. But yes, in coming times, this is going to be a big trouble for all of us, including me as a parent again. My word is going in 10th, another one in 6th, 7th, so I realize what is the problem because Unke liye phone is a very important part of their life. Whereas, if we take it otherwise, it is putting them into bad troubles. Trust me, half of the reasons because they are not able to perform properly in academics also is their phone. Phone par koi padhai nahi hoti. They fool us in this way. Is pe notes aaye hain, koi notes nahi aate. Copy mein work mangwaya hai. Ask your child ki kaam school mein kyun nahi kiya? Copy pe ki phone mein kaam kyun aaya hai? We need to be slightly more vigilant about it. Of course, they are your children. You can afford it. You have the full right to give the best facilities to your children. And we, we would really pray to God that all your dreams come true as far as your children are concerned. But yes, this is something we all need to be very careful about because this is creating a lot of problem which we as parents usually come to know at a very later stage. So please respect your words, use of phone, for how much time your child is using, this is for your child's benefit. After every five minutes picking up phone is not a right indication for your child. Rest is of course your wish, we cannot see anything, but these are our thing about it. Now moving about to bullying. As far as bullying is concerned, this is a bully-free uh, school. So basically, no kind of bullying will be permitted. As far as bullying is concerned, of course, we do understand that the bullying can be of any kind, like physically abusing someone or verbally abusing someone, using kind of statements which are really derogatory for anyone. So there is totally zero tolerance for any kind of bullying that is being done to our children. Um, it may be done at any level. It may be in the, amongst themselves within the classes. So uh, one very important thing that we need you all to understand as a parent is we do have a proper system of addressing the situation where bullying cases are reported to us. Student can report to any person with whom he or she is comfortable with. But yes, going through the process, what we have done is, uh, we have played a, uh, placed a complaint box in front of library in our school. In that complaint box, if a child is feeling something where he or she feels that this needs to be reported due to any reason, any problem that the child is feeling, can be written on a page and put into that box without actually telling their own name. In case they do not want to tell their name, it's fine. But yes, I assure you, in case they tell their name, it will be kept 100% confidential. The box is opened by the counselor of our school, Ms. Mandeep Nijal, in our presence, in my presence or otherwise in uh, Prince Nam's presence. And of course, all the concerns are read from it. But yes, at the same time, please tell your ward not to make a mockery of the system. Put it something, put something inside it if it's a genuine problem. In case it's not, then please do not put anything. Not just because I get annoyed over something that my teacher has scolded me over XYZ thing, so I put a complaint against that teacher. That is not justified. So kindly make your all understand that what bullying means. We have been having a lot of bullying sessions in the school also. And we have been uh, talking to our children about it. We have been making them aware. Because many children don't know what is right and and secondly, 
um, even if the things are going on whom they are supposed to report to. So again, we have been telling them they can approach to their class teacher, they can approach to their counselor, they can approach to coordinator, they can approach to vice principal, with whomsoever they are comfortable with. Just say we park that day, they feel that, you know, that frequency matches, please go and talk, not a problem. Yes, we do have a follow up. All the problems go to the counselor again. Anyway, she is expert in her field. So she guides us and children accordingly. Okay, how to go on with it. And then of course we have a follow up of the child or the problem with the vice principal. And of course all the cases are related to principal, principal ma'am also. And in case any help or any support is required from her, from her side, we seek her help, her guidance also. So this is very important for all of us to understand that this is in place. And yes, kindly make your child brave and bold enough to speak out what is wrong. For the betterment of our children, we have many more other committees also which are working in the school and we are trying to think, make things better for our children. Like uh, one of the committees is the school safety committee. This committee deals with basically the safety of children in our school. Uh, what all measures can be taken to make the things better for them. Then of course the arrival and dispersal committee that takes care of children coming to school and leaving the school properly with total safety. Then the safe Vahan committee that basically deals with the buses or the pickup or drop of children. Then it is the academic court committee which ultimately focuses on how to empower our children more academically in all the subjects. The anti bullying committee that I have talked to you just to know about. Then it's the advocacy committee, inclusion committee, activity committee to, um, basically takes decisions regarding what kind of multiple activities can be done for our children so as to give them a maximum exposure of um, you know the outer world and the, all the kinds of skills that are required to be developed. And of course the grievance committee of the child sexual abuse. So any kind of problem that comes over, we have a solution. Please come and talk to us. So let's move on. We will be moving on now to the new education policy. So we need to understand this. So now this, um, we have moved on to the skill based approach. We have already done this last year also with your words. So all activities done in school, art, dan dance, music, sports, IT will have an element of the skill progression. That is basically you will be having a look at how much more your child has learned. It's not about making a child pass or fail. No, it's just that what is the progress in the learning by your child. Then it is the skill subjects for class 9 will be as follows. The subjects are AI, artificial intelligence and marketing and sales. So now one very th important thing that we need to understand here is that if a child does not want to take additional subject Hindi, Punjabi or French due to any reason, if a child does not want to take the additional subject, then he or she can opt for computer applications. Now the condition for that is because the subjects are too the child opting for computer application cannot be having artificial intelligence as a skill subject. So I repeat it once again because this is something very important. A child who does not want to opt for the additional subject language because of any reason that the child is not comfortable with the language, they can opt for the computer applications but only subjected to the condition that the child should not be having AI as the skill subject. I hope I'm very clear with this. So now, few of the CBC examination guidelines because in class 9 we follow the similar rules and regulations that we do for class 10. Because our immediate tenth may have So we need to be very particular and careful about it. So this will be the pattern of assessments that we will be following. So periodic assessment 1 will be of 25 marks, 2 will be of 80. 3 will be of 35 and then again final will be of 80. So this will be the pattern that we will be following this year. And other than these of course the usual class tests and all such things will be conducted as and when required by the subject teachers. Okay, now talking about the internal assessments for class 9 and 10. Now we need to be very particular about the periodic assessments because the periodic assessments comprise of 5 marks basically in all. So these would be restricted to three in each subject in academic year and the average of best two would be taken for the final submission of marks. So these tests tend to follow a pattern which is quite similar to the final end of the course examination and have a gradual increasing portion of the content. Hence they also tend to prepare students for final summative exams. So anyhow the weightage of this component would be five marks only. 
another part of internal assessment is the multiple assessments that are being conducted by the subject teacher. So these are the multiple things, the observations, oral test, individual or group work, class discussions, field work, project studies, concept maps, uh, maps, uh, visual representation, crosswords. So these are the activities that are planned by the subject teachers depending on the requirement of the subject. Then there are few other subject enrichment activities which are aligned with curriculum aiming at the enrichment of understanding and skill development. So basically language in, the, in languages we focus more on the listening, speaking, reading and writing skills. In maths we have many kinds of activities like lab activities and small experiments that are done. In science we have a lot of sci um, making of 3D models and we have hands-on activities by the students. And of course the science lab manuals are made. Social science, we have math, math work, project work related to art and culture that include development of life skills too. So these are basically all the kinds of activities that are being done and now all these activities are compiled together and put in these portfolios. The portfolios are submitted to the subject teachers at the end of the session. So this is whatever activity the child is doing, in case the activity gets checked, the child is not supposed to throw them. Put them inside a folder and keep it carefully. Please make this make a note of this. Recently, many times children tell in the end that I have not it. So that's a problem for us at the end of the session because it, uh, at the end there is a lot of pressure for the theory exams also. So we cannot ask the child to do the activities again. So that's a problem for us. So it's a request, please ensure. So port portfolios are very, very important for class 9th and 10th students basically. So what we do here is we ask the child to compile everything that he does in one particular subject in one particular folder. And that was submitted as a portfolio folder to the subject teachers at the end of the session. Then what are the areas of assessment? Of course, we'll be assessing them on scholastic as well as co-scholastic. So moving on with this assessment part, <coughs> scholastic areas of assessments are that the compulsory subjects, subject 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that means English, the second language, <coughs> science, math, social science, and 6 and 7. 6 is a skill subject but the child has opted. And the subject 7 is the language 3 and as I have told you earlier in case the child does not want to have, have language 3 then he or she can opt for computer application subjected to the condition that the child is not having AI as a skill subject because both the things are similar. So now these are the few things which we need to understand very clearly. If a student fails in any one of the three compulsory academic subjects, science, maths and social science and passes in the skill subject as offered as a six optional subject, then it will be replaced by skill subject and result of only class 10 board examination will be computed accordingly. This will not be followed in class 9th. So what is the benefit of having skill subject is, as you all were asking earlier also. So the benefit of having skill subject is, while appearing in board examinations of class 10, in case a student fails in one of the three compulsory academic subjects, which are already mentioned there, science, maths and social science. Then the marks of skill subject will be put over there and child's result will be calculated accordingly. But this will not be done in the ninth. So in ninth, the child is supposed to pass in all the subjects. Students offering additional sixth skill subject may also offer an additional language, three or computer application as a seventh subject. Computer application as seventh subject and artificial intelligence as skill subject cannot be taken together. So the same thing is repeated thrice in the slides so that there is no confusion amongst the parents. Division of marks for additional subject as computer application, 50 will be theory and 50 will be practical. This is just for your general information. Then division of marks for skill subject will be again theory 50 and practical 50. So the same thing will be followed this year. So this is again when we talk of grading, the kind of grades that are being put. So this is the 8 point grading scale that we follow. So top 1 by 8 of the past candidate will be A1, then next 1 by 8, A2, B1, B2 and so on accordingly. So now we come to the promotion policy for class 9, which is very, very important for each one of us to understand. In order to be declared as having passed in class 9, a child has to clear each subject by scoring minimum 33% marks in each of the internal assessments, final exams and in total 100 marks. 
So this means a child needs to clear in internal exams separately and in theory final written exams separately. So that means the child needs to pass and get minimum 33 percent marks at all three levels. If a student scores less than 33 percent in one or two subjects in final exams, it will be considered as compartment. I repeat, if a student scores less than 33 percent in one or two subjects, it will be considered as compartment and he or she will have to write the compartment exam and score above 33 in order to be promoted to class 10. If a student scores less than 33% in more than two subjects, he or she will be considered detained in class 9. So that means the child will not be promoted to class 10 in case the child is scoring less than 33% in more than two subjects. There are few important changes that have been introduced by CBSC. It is like we have two level of maths paper now for class 10. Now this is very important for you to understand because registration regarding this, this will be done in the current academic session when your board is in ninth. So there are two levels, one is standard, another is basic. So the first level would be for the same as the existing one. The existing one is the standard one. And the other would be an easier level. That means basic level is going to be an easier level. Math standard for the existing level of the examination and maths basic for the easier level of the examination. So till now we have got two things. That first thing is that there will be a standard level of examination, the normal one. And another one will be the basic level which is considered to be easier than this. Now what we need to realize this thing is that, uh, about this is that, this syllabus classroom teaching internal exams and the level of examination could remain the same. So that the students get an opportunity <clears throat> to study the whole range of topics throughout the year and are able to decide for the board examination that which level they want to opt for. Registration regarding that this is done during class 9th. So you take a call and of course your wards will be asked by the class teachers to tell us that which mass they want to opt, they want to have um, standard or they want to have basic. So one very important thing before you take the decision and you need to know is the standard level will be meant for students who wish to opt for maths at senior secondary level. This means basically if a child opts for basic level, the child cannot take maths after 10th at any level. Maths cannot be taken by the child. So any child who feels that he is sure that he not have maths, then the child can opt for basic. But yes, if you want to keep your options open, and if you, want, if you wish to know the, and uh, you wish to have a broader spectrum for your future career, then of course you should go for standard maths. It's again your goal. Basic level would be for the students not keen to pursue maths at higher levels. Internal examination teaching will be uniform for all the students. And a student can appear in standard paper also in the month of July after the declaration of the result of basic maths. In case the child has opted for basic maths or home board may appear and the result has come out. But still the child wants to um, improve and still want the child wants to go for standard paper then the child can appear again in the month of July. But this of course affects the child's admission to the future classes. Because the more time you are going to take to get your mark sheets, the process will get lingered on. In case a student fails at any level of maths, he or she can appear at the compartment examination as per the norms given below by the board. This is for the class 10 basically. Basic mathematics, a child who has opted for basic mathematics will be appearing only for the basic mathematics paper. It's for, for example, let me start again with this slide. If a child fails in class 10 board maths exam, in case the child has opted for basic, the child will appear for basic again. But in case the child has opted for standard, then the child can opt for standard or basic. Because since we have found that already the child is failing, the child is not comfortable with maths, the child can go for basic. But again, the same thing applies that the child will not be able to take maths again ever in his future courses. So these are the um, areas of assessment for both scholastic. We will be assessing the child in the terms of discipline, in art education, health and physical education, work education. So these are the course scholastic areas. Again, the portfolios are to be maintained in this also, wherever the teacher says to pre uh, prepare a file regarding this or whatever data, for example, art also, some paintings are made or some work is done, kindly ask your child to put it together inside the 
portfolio folder. It can include photographs, it can include certificates of merits or achievements, even whatever um, competitions you take part in or whatever certificates are, whatever, wherever you have won, copies of those can also be shared with your class educators. So any kind of this kind of information can be shared with the teachers in your portfolios. Now coming to how to prepare for your exams. <coughs> so this has been a concern for a lot of parents. But what we have learned as all our teachers are class 10 board educators also and marker also. They have been invigilating for the duties, they have been checking the papers. So they know and they have an expertise in this field and we have no doubt about that. Then NCRT is the Bible. At first and the foremost level, what we are required to do is we are supposed to do our NCRT. Be very thorough with it, with lots and lots of written practice. Regularity is required. And the most important part, keep your mobile away when you are studying. It's very, the fourth color point here, it's the most difficult thing to apply, I think. <laughs> the rest of things can be done. Anyhow, the rest of the books and rest of the material can also be, of course, consulted, considered, uh, you know, of course you can do as per guidance of your teachers, not a problem, but yes, the first and the foremost important thing, what we need to face with you all is, please make your child do the NCRT first. The books related to higher levels can be of help or can be used only when the child has basic idea of what is there in your NCRT. So these are few important websites which are providing a lot of material for your child's benefit. The syllabus and all such things are present here. Yes, for 2023-24, the uh, syllabus and the rest of the information is yet to be updated by the CBSC. But yes, most of the things, sample question papers, a lot of things are available on these websites. So instead of going to Google and searching for material, kindly refer these websites which are made by CBSC. And these are the sites which you can trust on. So these are wonderful uh, websites which can be used. And thank you. I think I have taken enough time for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Though it was a big bite to be swallowed in this short bite, but I am sure the parents must be very sure that their children are in the same hat. So thank you, Father Ma'am. If your actions inspire children to dream more, learn more, do more, and become the best, you are indeed worthy of the title teacher. So I would request Dr. Parvel to once again take over and introduce the teachers who will be the class teachers and the subject teachers to you. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, so let's move on um, with our class teachers and subject teachers for class 9 that will be, we will be teaching your what this year. So starting with 9A, for 9A the class teacher is Ms. Renu, please come up. English teacher is Ms. Rumi, please come up. Hindi teacher is Ms. Shubra, please come up. Maths teacher Ms. Rumi. For science, our physics teacher is Rima ma'am. Chemistry teacher is the class teacher, Renu ma'am. And for bio, our new faculty uh, will be joining very soon. She is, uh, she is Ms. Woodfree. For social sciences, we have uh, history, Ms. Nopur. For geography and economics, it's Ms. Rashmi. Please come ma'am. And for political science, we have another new faculty who is joining us this year, Mr. Abhay, who is an amazing teacher. Of course, our children are going to benefit with uh, these teachers. So these are the set of faculties for 9A. And for uh, our activity teachers, for music, we have Mr. Jadeev. Please come, sir. For dance, Ms. Manisha. Art, Ms. Hartrip. Computer applications, Ms. Monica. Please come, ma'am. AI is Ms. Narendra. Sports is Mr. Tandrukash. And for marketing and sales, again, we have a new faculty who will be joining us, Ms. Monica Rohila. 
So these are the teachers for 9A and I wish all of these are going to make this year wonderful for your work. I'm sure for that. So now moving on with 9B. Uh, Activity teachers, please stay here. <laughs> I'll have to to you again. Yeah. Uh, so for 9B, the class teacher is Ms. Indaveer. Please come ma'am. She'll be taking English for 9B. Then for Hindi is Ms. Manju. Please come ma'am. Math is Mr. Varun. Please come sir. For Science, Physics we have Dima ma'am. Chemistry is by Renu ma'am. Yeah. And again by Ms. Rupert will be joining soon. Uh, Ms. Rupert for History. Ms. Rashmi for Geography and Economics, Ms. Narendra for uh, AI, Music, Mr. Devi, Dance is Ms. Marisha, she's here, okay, Art, Ms. Hatrif, Computer Applications, Ms. Monica, AI, Ms. Narendra is done, Marketing and Sales again, Ms. Monica Rohila will be joining soon, Sports is Mr. Chandra Rakesh. So this is the set of speakers from MIT. 9C stays up. For 9C, uh, the class in charge is Rupurma. Uh, English is with Ms. Anamika. She is not present here today. She is out for uh, English board checking of class 10. She was on duty, so she couldn't manage to come there. Hindi is Ms. Shubra. Please come, ma'am. Maths is by Ms. Praveen. And rest of the teachers are safe. <laughs> so, of course, science, physics is by Ms. Prima. Chemistry is Venu, ma'am. Bio, Ms. Kutpeet will be joining soon. And History by Ms. Nukul. Geography and Economics by Ms. Rashmi. And of course, the Political Science by the new teacher, Mr. Ahe. And Music is Mr. Devi. Dance is Ms. Manisha. Art is Ms. Hatrip. Computer Applications, Ms. Monica. AI, Ms. Sarindar. And Marketing and Sales, Ms. Monica Rupula. And Sports, Mr. Chandra. Great team of Sorry. Punjabi is Ms. Kavita. Please come up. Up to Melody. Sorry. 9A, B, and C. 9A, B, and C. Please come up. So she is Ms. Kavita. She is 9A, B, C. Yes, COVID happened, but we have to get over it. We have. 
we are back to what we were pre-COVID. So we are not going to be talking about COVID again. This happened. Children, you know, started getting into this habit. We've given one year's transition, right? So enough time has been given for us to get out of whatever negative might have been imbibed. However, we cannot say that COVID was all bad. There were so many things that we have learned and done which have helped us to move forward. So I think we all are pretty strong with our communication now because of COVID. But my request to all of you is please take back the reins of parenthood and be the parent in the house. Have some guidelines put into place and as parents, both of you need to be on the same page because we all know that children are smart. If there is any miscommunication or if the children can see that they can get something from one parent which we, they might not be able to get from another parent, they will go to that parent. So I'll give you an example. Supposing Paro and Mama is saying that the children have to be here by 8, right? Because our attendance is happening from 8 to 8, 5. We do not want any child to be walking into the class after attendance has happened because it is going to disturb those children. However, if I say, no, it's okay, let the child come 15 minutes late. Let the child go into the class. What is happening? There is a discrepancy. There is... Uh, you know, two messages going out to the child. So who do you think the child will listen to? The child will listen to me. Not the class teacher, not the coordinator. In the same manner, it happens in every household. So there, the parents, there is the good cop and there is the bad cop. Let's all be the good cops, but stern cops. Yes? So there is a difference. You have to be friendly parents. You don't have to be friends. The children have enough friends. Please put in the boundaries. Please let's tell the children what is acceptable and what is not. Because we are doing that in school and we are going to enforce it. The children are coming to school not to socialize, not to make friends only and not to be always worried about what XYZ is saying, doing, thinking. We need to now internalize. Because of the overexposure of the gadgets, the children are not able to concentrate. The concentration power has gone down. Forget about children. Most adults cannot leave their phones anymore. They just cannot leave their phones. I have seen parents with children whose children might be about to cross a road and the mother or the father is on the phone. It happened with me yesterday. When I was driving back, the mother must have picked up the child and they were standing on the burn. The child stepped off. I am going at 60 because I am a law-abiding citizen. <laughs> and yet it was such a scary feeling for me. The mother was holding the child but she was talking on the phone. What if the child had just pulled her hand and walked right across the car? It is a sad state of affairs. So the one thing that you can do for yourself and your children is take back the mobiles because they don't need it. They are not booking their cars. They are not going to work. Their boss is not calling them. Yes? So we are not calling them. We are not going to be sending any homework on the mobiles. Our teachers are not going to send any instructions. We have created a broadcast group and that is the reason is that a lot of parents still do not see the school app for the homework that is uploaded, for the circulars that are uploaded. Everything is available on the school app. We would like to wean you off the WhatsApp group also, the broadcast group by the next two months. So that is the seriousness that we have to 
take the spell. Let's just put away the mobiles and please put them on silent. All the messaging, those, those, you know, those weird beeps that come, that has actually started dictating our lives. Every time there's a beep, we need to check it as to, you know, who sent the message or what's happening. So, believe me, it's a very peaceful life. It's a life where you can concentrate on what you're doing. And it will help your children refocus. Because we have lost the ability to listen. We have lost the ability to write. We have lost the ability to read. Please start spending time with your children. Do, so don't say my child is studying or my child was studying a lot or my child was doing but I don't know, you know what the child was doing. Please be aware of what the child is doing. These two years are very crucial. They are children. We are the adults. Yes. We cannot later say, oh, but you know, I wanted the child to be independent. Yes, let them be independent. Let them do their chores. Let them help you around the house. But when they are studying, sit with them, with your attention on them. So that they also know that you are there for them. You might not be teaching that subject, but you need to keep an eye on them. So my really uh, humble request to all the parents to now focus on the children and like ma'am said, let's connect better. Whenever you have any problem, whenever you feel that your child needs extra support, whether it is academically or it is because of some behavior of any other child also, please connect with the teachers, the class teachers. If you do not feel satisfied, please connect with the coordinator. The vice principal is sitting in the same office. If you are still not satisfied in any way, they will bring that issue to me. We will devise a method. We cannot let anyone else take away our right to focus and study. So as far as we are concerned, it is going to be zero tolerance for misbehavior, for not being on time, not being punctual, for not being correct uniform, for not bringing what you're supposed to do, home assignments, class assignments, right? So you need to do the children, all the children who have come here, I'm really grateful to all of you that you have taken out the time to be with your parents to come for the orientation. So that's kudos to you. That shows the very first positive thing that you've done this year. I'm really happy. Continue like that. It's very, very important for us to be responsible for our own actions. First, we need to look at that. And then let's point fingers at others. If you have any issues or problems with anyone else, please speak to your teachers. Yes? So, this is for everyone. School rules have to be followed. And my request to all the parents is, have rules at home. Children need boundaries. We think that we are being very kind when we let them do whatever or we go to the other extreme. When do we have to go to extremes? When there is no boundary. So we don't say anything and then suddenly we go from 0 to 100. That's not okay because the child needs to be told what can or cannot or should or shouldn't be done. They are children. That's our job. So that is why my request is that we have to work as partners. We are in partnership. And from our side, the whole team is ready. I promise you, we are going to do our best. We are going to ensure that it is going to be uh, academically and otherwise a very successful year. We are bringing in everything back, as ma'am told you, we've got our enrichment clubs. So you will have enough opportunities to explore your talent. Because it's not that we all become academicians after we finish our 10th. You know, we might go into sports, we might go into music, dance, whatever we want to do. So that all is going to be taken care of. All I request of the parents is, 
ensure that you make your children follow the rules. Yes, and communicate on time and correctly. If you do not feel that you are being listened, move higher and take it to the next level. Do not wait till the finals to inform that X, Y, Z reason is the reason that my child has not performed. Yes, so that's an excuse. We don't want any excuses. We want proactive children and parents. Yes, so that is what is needed. So you need to be proactive. You need to be aware. You need to know what your child needs. And let us know what your child needs. We will do our best to provide that. Right? So uh, I hope everybody understood the basics of uh, the presentation. Are there any doubts or questions that you would like to raise? Yes. Anybody? Any questions? Have you understood the skill subjects? The children already had the skill subjects, so they're moving there. So you need to understand that class 9th is very important because we register the children with the CBSE 9th. So whatever you choose gets registered in the CBSE. What subjects you're choosing, yes? And then it becomes a very big administrative problem to change it next year. Of course, we get to relook at your choices in class 10. However, there are applications to be sent, there are proofs to be given. So that is why we need to make informed choices in 9 before we register. And before we register, we will give you ample opportunities to go through what you are asking us. Yes, so you will write, you will cross check your names, the children's names, addresses, subjects, everything. But we have to be very careful because CPSE is an organization and you can imagine the number of schools that they're dealing with. So we need to send absolutely 110% correct data to them with minimal changes required. Yes, so skill subjects you've understood. The reason we want the skill subject to be brought in as it is we are following the NEP is because it gives the children an advantage. There is a 50% component of practicals and practicals are easier to score. And the same goes for the third language. So as it is your children have been doing three languages, right? So English is already there and there is Hindi and you have had, your child has had a third language. Either Punjabi or French. Now, out of these three languages, Hindi, Punjabi or French, the child is going for the second language. Now, if the child does not want to take the other language that the child had as an additional language, again, additional language is something that in every other school, the children have to do it themselves. That's why it's an additional subject, optional. The school is not involved. However, three years back, we took an informed decision that that result also matters because if the child does not do well in the second language, those marks are counted in place of the second language. So if your child does not do well, we are not talking about fail. So if your child gets more marks in the additional language, those marks are counted in place of the second language. Or the additional subject now as we are talking about computers. Again, a scoring subject because of the 50% component of practicals. So all the options that can be given are being given. And we are providing the children two periods a week to study the additional language as well. That's extra work for our teachers. However, we are doing it because in the long run, it benefits the children and anything that benefits the children benefits us. So that is why you have to now be very proactive and take advantage and ensure that you are on top of the game from day one, which was last Monday. And you are. The very fact that you're sitting here, you are. So we need to be very, very proactive. The uh, next thing that I would like to say is that yes, I know that uh, there was a problem and uh, the fact that we have to prepare for the next session. You have to understand these are extra classes.
So our work for the next session continues and because of that we have uh, you know said that we will not be able to provide transport from next Monday till Friday. However, for the transport children only, the children who are going to be taking transport or who are taking transport and cannot be dropped by the parents, we will have online access also so that the child does not miss out what is being taught. This is only for the children with transport and where you cannot drop the child. Do not take online access if you can bring the child to school because you yourself are witness and you know there's a lot of difference between children sitting in the class and online studies. This is just to make sure that the child does not completely miss out. This is an additional benefit or facility that we are giving to our parents who have opted for transport and are not able to drop their children to school. So please do not avail it if you can. Avoid it. However, where parents are working and are not able to drop and pick up the child, they can do that. So from Monday, all those children who have transport cannot, their IDs will be created and they can join for the next five days in the online mode. Any other issues or problems or requirements of the parents that we can resolve or solve? Alright, so for the next week will be like the school will get over at 12 or 12.50? 12 uh, Ma'am, the same. Whatever we've been following. 12 minutes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, these 10 days are basically extra just to get a head start. So, the timing is the same. Yes. So, anything else? Thank you so much parents for coming and it's a pleasure to uh, speak to all of you and uh, meet you and I think uh, the whole team, uh, you know, joins me in wishing the children a very, very happy and productive year. And let's keep the communication lines open. Let's, uh, let's actually put in our best because these years will not come back. So yes, the children should enjoy, but after their work is complete. So please put in your... Uh, processes at home. Please put in your rules at home because that is needed. So uh, that is my only request and that will make your life easier. And any support that you need from us, you are most welcome. Uh, so we always say prior appointment but as you all know, you can walk into my office if it's an emergency or otherwise. Please keep speaking, please keep connecting and let's not let little little issues become a problem because that is a problem. Yes, so let's resolve. There is nothing that can be solved by mutual discussion and we are always there to go that extra mile for our children. Whatever we can do, we will do it. So if there is an administrative hassle, yes, we will let you know why we can't do something but we will still find a way around it. So thank you so much parents for coming and thank you teachers, thank you Parul ma'am for taking us through the presentation so beautifully. As you know, ma'am joined last year, but I don't think anyone could even uh, ever think. So ma'am knows the school inside out better than most. So thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation and thank you teachers. And all the best to the new class teachers and the subject teachers. I am sure it's going to be a very productive year. And let's, uh, you know, let's be positive. That's the most important. So it's our attitude that matters. Work continues, studies continue. We need to be positive. Yes? So have that attitude. I can do it. Do whatever you're doing to the best of your ability. That's all that is needed. You don't need to compete with anyone else. Just do your best. And believe me, that is going to be better than what your expectation is or what your parents' expectation is. We just underperform most of the time. Yes? So push yourselves, parents, push your children, teachers, please push the students, and I will push you. <laughs> yes? All right. Thank you so much, parents. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Padma. Thank you, Ma'am. Ma'am, thank you for the most 
inspirational and encouraging words you shared with all of us. Being a smart wonder right is about growing, changing and helping each other. Every one of you have already earned your place here. May this session take you to a remarkable journey and this is the beginning we are going to start. Though we have already started from this Monday, that's the 6th of March. I congratulate and welcome you all. I request all of you to stand and let's join to sing the school anthem.